fountain of life. A collection of live recorded sermons from His Grace Bishop Emilianos Maloa aiming to make us fountains of the Holy Spirit. Here is today's message. I would like to ask you all a question. Depending on the answer, we will understand how much we got away from what we heard today, and also how much and how we can help our children, because I think this is a subject of common interest, how to help the next generation, which is the future and the present. I would like to ask everybody else, why do you think the prodigal son return to the father after all the terrible things he has done. And why didn't he go to his brother, who was always righteous, closer to his age, and we could say that he could have been more understanding, or we would have been expecting the brother to be more understanding when the son just spent away all the inheritance of the father. Why do you think the prodigal son returned to the father? This has to do with repentance and with freedom, and with everything we talked about. This, this is the question of why our children are going away from us, if you haven't realized what I'm asking you, and how can we make them come back to us? It's not just about repentance, it's about our families. It's an everyday problem. And if all, the prodigal son returned because he knew that he will not find a father that will judge him. He will find open arms. And that's why he didn't go to his brother, because his brother would have judged him. So what I'm trying to express is that if our children know that when they will do something wrong, we will hug them and we will not judge them, they will come back to us. If they know that we will tell them, you have to be righteous, we won't see them again. Eventually, we won't see them again. And that's not how the church goes forward. So, love conquers everything. And we need to keep this in mind. If we try to get across the right message, what's right and what's wrong, it won't get across. If we try to get across the message that whatever you do, it doesn't matter, I'm here. Whatever you do, if you do the worst, I will love you even more because you understand that you suffer yourself. You're in a, you're in a selfish suffering when you're sick. I understand that. I understand your slavery, but I'm not here to tell you that to free yourself, you do anything else other than what you can do, which is come back to me. And I will love you, and that's how you free yourself. For someone to to become to to become free is not just I want to become free, I give up the sins that I do. We can't do that. It's not like I press one button and everything happens. I have to deny myself. And in order to deny myself, which is a self-love, I have to love something more, which is I have to love Christ, I have to love God more. This is how I deny the love of myself, by loving something more. And how do I become free? I become free by becoming one with the thing that I love. If I love the sin, I will become a slave of the sin because I become one with the sin. But if I love God, I become one with God and I become one with freedom. Only God is freedom. So if we want to get the right message across in our families and in our, in our children, they need to know that regardless what they do, even if they betray us, we are here. We love them. And even if they do the worst, we love them even more. Otherwise, I think there is no way back for them. And it's not easy because we want to be the righteous ones. We want to be the ones that will teach them. But it won't work. 
If we want peace, we need to be above righteousness. God is above righteousness. If he was to judge us, we would have been all in hell a long time ago. But we're not. And this proves his love. So if we want to save our children, if we want to make them like Saint Nectarium, we need to let them understand, to help them understand that there is love in the family. It doesn't matter what they're doing. They can come back and they will only find love and not judgment. That's what I wanted to tell you.